Hey everyone, as always, welcome to the channel. Thanks for stopping by and hanging out for a few. My name's Rich, I'm the channel host, and let's jump right in here. So this week we have not been doing a lot of shooting. We have not been out flying the drone. Um, here in Prescott, Arizona, we do have a forest fire right to the south of us. We've got a very large TFR, uh, temporary flight restriction area. And we've been seeing a lot of the um, slurry bombers and helicopters all, all flying south of Prescott to get this fire under control. So in the meantime, we've had a lot of smoke, uh, smoke haze in the air. And so we haven't been getting out much, but I have been working on some new videos couple of videos for my Teachable website where we've got multiple classes available for drone operators covering autonomous flight, 2D and 3D modeling, imaging, video, and doing progression reporting for construction clients. Now, what I'm doing today, I've also been digging into some new Lightroom courses that I'm developing here. And I wanted to do something on the YouTube channel that's a little different. So we're going to be talking about editing drone images today. And I'm going to show you through three applications, Lightroom, Photoshop, and Affinity Photo. And we're going to take an image that you see on screen here. It's not really so passable. It's not a great image. I recognize that right away. And I knew while we were shooting the images um, a couple of weeks ago, that the uh, north side of this particular house was not going to come across well because of where the sun is in the sky. So sometimes we do not have the best case scenario for shooting or editing our images, in this case shooting, just because of the time of day that we needed to meet the realtor. We had multiple properties that the realtor wanted to get through, plus some video of the properties. So we did our best at the time of day that we could, and what I wanted to show you here is that we can recover this pretty well. So we're in Lightroom first, and then we're going to take a look at Photoshop, and then we're going to take a look at Affinity Photo. These are not going to be really long edits. They can go pretty quickly, and you can get closer to what you wanted. Of course, the optimal thing to do is be out shooting at the best time of day. So early mornings, late evenings where we get sunsets and sunrises and maybe some you know, gorgeous clouds that Arizona is known for. When we don't have those great puffy clouds for, um, you know, for the rainy season here, um, we get those awesome clouds. But for a good part of the year, we just get hyper blue skies. And oftentimes that leads to washed out images, depending on where you're shooting. So without any further delay, we're going to do this in three parts. We're going to do Lightroom first, then we'll come back and do Photoshop second. And then we're going to do Affinity Photo third. And we're going to be using this same image. So this image that I had uploaded to my Lightroom library after we did the flight for the client. And this was uh, back on April 7th is when we met up with them. Like I said, not the best time of day, but we can do something with it. Right now, we're in the Lightroom library, but I'm going to go ahead and hit the D key here. Oh, and by the way, this is a raw file. So when we were shooting this, I actually set my drone up to shoot raw and jpeg so i have jpeg versions of all these images too but i wanted to see what we could do with the raw image to make this much more realistic the big thing is we've got no detail on the uh, north side of the house the north side of the house has some awesome views heading out to the north and one of the things that the realtor wanted to showcase for his client was the fact that you know this is a gorgeous patio area this place is meant for hosting get-togethers with people all right, I'm going to hit the D key here real quick, and that's going to throw us over into the develop module. If you are not truly familiar with Lightroom, um, we do have other tutorials here, and we're going to be having a new tutorial series coming out really soon, and we'll announce that when it comes out. So I am in the develop module on the left-hand side. I've got my presets, snapshots, and history. On the right-hand side, I've got my camera raw editor here. So I'm just going to zoom in over here. So this is the basic editing panel. This is also basically the camera raw editing panel. You can use this with JPEGs as well. And so I'm going to zoom this back out. And this is going to be really quick. So we're going to pop in here and we're going to try a different color profile. We're going to use Adobe's landscape color profile. And this has already punched up the colors just a little bit. And this is looking pretty realistic for this time of year in Arizona. So We've got, you know, we've got a lot of dirt and sand here. And then we've got a lot of scrub and junipers and some pine trees. 
and some random cactuses even at this high elevation in the Prescott area. All right. The blue sky is pretty washed out. First thing I'm going to do over here, I'm going to drop highlights down by uh, 100. So we just darkened up the sky a little bit and some of the highlights in the foreground have come up as well. Now I'm going to push shadows up because I want this detail in here. So I want to see what's going on in this porch patio area and what's happening under this covered area and the cool picnic table over here. Let's zoom that back out. Let's go ahead and bump the shadows up. I'm going to do it uh, plus 80. All right. So things have lightened a little bit. The colors are pretty close. Also, when I just zoomed in here, I don't know how well it comes across on your screen, but there is some pixelation now because we just pushed the shadows way up. We can deal with some of that pixelation, some of that noise for sure. After hitting highlights and shadows, I'm going to shift and double click whites, shift and double click blacks to see where Lightroom gets me, and it's gotten me pretty far along. This is looking a heck of a lot better than our starting point just a few moments ago. We're also going to, I'm going to bring clarity up by plus 20. So for a lot of your outdoor shoots, if you are shooting into shadows, you can recover a good deal of things. I'm also going to push dehaze up just a little bit. Not too much. That punched up the colors overall. And we're going to go just a little higher um, with our vibrance as well. So this does look like the house. We also did some shots on the back side of the house where the sun was behind us. So shooting into the southern part of the house, it was well lit. And the colors are pretty much spot on. So I could spend some more time in here fine tuning. Um, we could brush some light in here by using the masking brush. That's one of the new tools here on Lightroom. And I will be talking about that more in our full length class. Like I said, this is a quick walkthrough for you just to get a feeling of how you can quickly edit these. On the right hand side, I'm gonna go down to the detail pane and I'm going to push the luminance noise reduction up just plus 20, zoom back in here. Now there's a lot less of that pixelation and noise in there. So in comparison to where we started, we can see a lot more here. And just to check that out, I'm just going to zoom in down here on the bottom of the screen. Uh, we're still in the develop module and I've got this little button YY. And when I click that, it's going to show us our before and after. I'm then going to click my, uh, click my tab key here and just to take away those menus on both sides so that we can take a look. So our starting point with our raw file versus our ending point with just a couple of quick moves. This is not perfect. I would still work on this a little longer to fine tune things to get the colors as realistic as possible. This is very close to what it looked like for the day, but still as photographers, we always nitpick our own work. Now I'd already sent some of these off to the client, to the realtor that we were working with. He was super thrilled with the final edits and this house has already been sold. So in just a couple of weeks time, so our stuff went up on the listing and right behind it, the house got sold. Now let's look over. I'm going to zoom in on the left hand side here just to look at that shadowed area on the porch. And now let's take a look at that same area with these couple of quick moves. We have brought a lot of detail up so we can see the doors and windows in here. We've brought detail up over on this porch with uh, all the different chairs setting out here. And let me just zoom this back out. But one of the big things that the realtor really wanted to show off was this whole grilling area under here. The, like I said before, this place is made for hosting multiple guests and, you know, just having a good time in the outdoors in northern Arizona. So this was a super quick edit, and I think that this has gone a long way for us here. I'm going to hit the D key again for that develop module, and then I hit the tab just to open up my uh, my menus again here. But... So this one is close to being finished. Of course, you can spend a little more time on your own toying around with your images, but Lightroom and the raw photo editor um, really helped us bring this thing back here. So this is, this is definitely a passable image. I sure would like to be here at a different time of day where we can get some natural light coming into there and lighting up some of those areas. And also sunset would just be awesome here. Granite Mountain is south and west of this one right now. So the sunsets are actually usually occurring out of granite but when it comes to monsoon season 
you get incredible skies, but you've just got to work with the season. All right, I'm going to close Lightroom Classic, and we are going to move into Photoshop. Yes, I really want to quit Lightroom Classic. Thank you. So just waiting for that to shut down for me. And you'll notice here on screen, so I actually saved out this DNG, the same one that we just used in Lightroom. And I'm going to drag this onto Photoshop. So here we are with editor number two. Now, if you've got Photoshop, you've got Lightroom as well. And this one actually remembered what I did with it last time. So, oh boy, um, we've got the open button down here. So I played with this before doing this video. And if this looks really familiar to you, that's good. There's a reason for that. It's because it's basically the same edit here. So we're looking in Photoshop right now. And over on the right hand side, we have the raw photo editor here. And I can go up to the basic panel. This might look super familiar. So at the basic panel, um, this is where we're doing our raw editor. So I drop the highlights down, as you can see, by the way, up here at the top, let's look in here. Um, the color profile that I used in Lightroom, I also used here Adobe Landscape, okay? And let's take a look. We didn't touch the exposure. We dropped the highlights. We bumped up the shadows plus 80, just like we did in Lightroom. Um, let's see here. Whites, we bumped up just a little bit with the shift click, and blacks uh, pulled those back just a little bit as well. We added plus 20 clarity, which is exactly what we did in Lightroom, uh, of plus 20 on the dehaze. Punch the vibrance just a little bit. Maybe this one is a little punchier than uh, the Lightroom version. So I don't know how much we really need the vibrance with the Adobe Landscape color profile. Let me just, I'm going to slide vibrance back to zero here. And that did not change things by much at all. So once again, colors are looking pretty good. And I'm actually going to reopen Lightroom Classic really quick. And we can see the Lightroom version as well, because that's where I left off there. So taking a look at this versus this, it looks like we've gotten to just about the same place with Lightroom and with Photoshop. So this is awesome. All right, I'm going to go ahead and close Lightroom here. And I'm going to say, yes, I really do want to quit this one. Now, once again, we had, you know, this was kind of a bland day here, um, just with the hyper blue skies. So if we wanted to get a little crazy in Photoshop, we could. By the way, before I leave this panel, let me go down to detail and let's make sure. Yes, OK, so the noise reduction was pushed up uh, 23 instead of 20. So I'll just drop that back. There we go. And then we also have color noise reduction if we wanted to use that as well. Once again, we're pretty much in, you know, in the home stretch with this. I'm going to hit open on it really quickly. All right, so there we go. And now we are in our main editing area in Photoshop. So we did the raw editor first, and now we can do our tweaks, adjustments. So we could make adjustment layers. Um, we can make additional layers if we want to fine tune some areas. Maybe we want to get rid of those cars off on the side of the road. Those cars were there for another construction location. One of the newer features, well, not super new, but everyone gets so excited about sky replacement. And usually I do like to show the locations as they are. Um, and I don't like to, you know, fake a lot of things uh, in the images because these listings, you know, this is a listing for a house for sale. So if someone comes out and the color of the house doesn't even match with what they saw on screen, or, you know, especially interior photographs, if you're not doing white balance appropriately, you know, uh, plain white walls can actually take on different color casts. So you can correct for those types of things. But over enhancing stuff sometimes actually turns some buyers off. But one thing we could entertain here, I'm going up to the edit menu and Photoshop now has a very good sky replacement. And uh, it's always been pretty easy to replace guys, but this seems to be one of the big things lately um, with a lot of software platforms out there is sky replacement, sky replacement, sky replacement. And, you know, that's really cool um, to, you know, have the opportunity and ability to do these sky replacements. But, um, you know, it's not always necessary. 
I'm going to brighten the sky just a bit. Let's see. Whoa. Let's dial that back just a bit more. And that looks like it's blending much better. So I was a little over, you know, it was a little washed out before. Let's go ahead and say OK to this. And so now we've got several layers that go into making our sky replacement. One of the other th really cool things with Adobe Photoshop is you can load your own skies into the sky replacement. So if you live in a place like I do in Arizona, I have a ton of sunsets from the Granite Dells and Granite Mountain, and especially monsoonal sunsets, sunsets which are absolutely crazy and dramatic. But here we go. We've gone from a... Um, gone from a pretty bland DNG raw file um, to something that's basically going to be passable in here. We could do some additional adjustment layers if we wanted to, but just to quickly go through, you know, one of these real estate edits where you're not out at the right time of day, I think we've brought this a, a nice long way. I think one of the things that I would like to do here is there's that big power line out there. I really don't like it. I'm not sure how well we could do with getting rid of it, but we can always give it a whirl. So I'm going to go over and let's see here. Um, spot healing brush. Let me. Actually, I don't want to use the spot healing brush. Let's use the healing brush instead. And I'm just going to shrink that brush down. Oh, I did need to use the other one. This happens occasionally. So spot healing brush. Let's see in here. So there's that power pole right up against the mountain. And I'd say that that's done a decent job, but it's still not still not there. Let's go in and paint that one more time. I just collapsed all my layers, by the way. And that is looking really good like that. So now we have gotten rid of that power line out there. That's a little unrealistic. So here I am doing, you know, faking something here. So that power, that power pole was visible from here. But uh, all right, what am I going to do next? I'm going to actually save this one out. I'm just going to save the JPEG version of it. So there we go on the desktop JPEG version. And I'm just going to put PS in front of that for Photoshop. And let's go ahead and hit save. All right. So I'm going to close this one now. We're out of Photoshop. And our third editor for the day is going to be Affinity Photo. Oh, by the way, let's just double click this and see. So yeah, that's coming across pretty nice. I'm, I'm fairly satisfied with that one. And what I'm going to do now is grab that DNG one more time. And let's drag that onto Affinity Photo, shall we? So now Affinity, I have been using for a while now, and Affinity, I actually use more for 360 images, for touching up the 360 images, and for viewing the 360 images. I can actually view them in a 360 viewer, which is absolutely awesome. It's a very powerful tool, and the price of Affinity is ridiculously reasonable. I purchased it uh, for Black Friday the other year, and I think maybe I paid $35 for this. But it, this is a fantastic editing program. So we've opened up another raw file. We're in the develop module of Affinity right now. And over on the right hand side, there's that basic panel again. There's that camera raw basic panel one more time for us. And first thing that I'm going to want to do in here, I'm going to go down to shadows and highlights because they've got that one hidden right now. But so I'm going to drop the highlights down. Maybe that's a little too much. Too much of a drop there. So I'm going to pull that back. And let's pull those shadows up, shall we? So pulling the shadows up. And look at that. The front of the house, again, is looking really nice in here. So that was our shadows and highlights. And let's go back up here. I would like to push the clarity to uh, plus 20, like we did in Photoshop and Lightroom. And I would like to push the vibrance to plus 20 as well. So there we go. And so this is still looking a little more washed out. So let's go down to profiles here really quick. Oh, no, that's just sRGB and things. So this is not quite as good as the Photoshop or Lightroom version at this moment, but I can still continue through here and do, do a little more with it if I wanted to. So that vibrance went up by plus 20. Let's bring the saturation up just a bit more. And we'll put that right to there. 
Um, I do also want to go back to the shadows and highlights because maybe let's pull these shadows back just a bit like we had before to plus 80. So that's looking pretty good. Not spot on, but very, very similar, I would say. So I think I'm satisfied in here. And we're going to do a little more. We're going to play with something else in here as well. Uh, by the way, so we have that basic editing panel. We've got a lens correction panel as well. Detail refinement. So one of the things that I want to do was bring that luminance noise reduction up by plus 20 again. Um, and we can also go in and actually do curves as well, just like Photoshop. And we don't have any other overlay in here yet. So this is coming very close. We could do a sky replacement with this as well, but that would be doing it manually. And, you know, we'd have to select out our foreground from our background, and then we'd have to drag some images in, which I didn't have prepped for you at the moment. So let's say we're satisfied with this. It's very close. Up in the upper left corner, we're just going to zoom in. We see the develop button right there. So I'm going to go ahead and hit develop now that we've used the raw editor. So once again, this one is coming in very close. And we do have some other tools to punch things up a little bit if we wanted to. So up on that top bar, we have a liquify persona, which we're not going to use. The develop persona, which is where we were before. So if we wanted to get back to that editor, we can right up on the top bar. But here's an interesting one, tone mapping. So tone mapping is associated with doing high dynamic range images usually. And what this is doing right now is it's tone mapping a single image for me. Whoa, that's way over the top. That kind of hurts my brain a little. And now if we look over on the right hand side, we're not, we're not in that basic editor anymore. We're in the tone map editor. So in the tone map editor here, I'm going to dial that uh, tone compression back a little bit here. Not all the way, maybe about 25. And let's see what we can do with local contrast in here. So we're actually adding some additional texture in here. Well, I brought it all the way to the side. Look at how rough that is. But if we dial it back here to maybe 20%, that is looking pretty nice to me. And once again, another image that's beyond just passable. So this one's working well for me. One of the other things we're going to, we're going to go ahead and apply this. So we could have done a detailed as well. So they got a couple of presets, but on the right hand side, when you're in the tone map editor, you can actually make some changes in here as well. So you can do some detail refinement as well as your color refinement. I'm going to go ahead and hit apply here. And now here we are back in our tone mapped uh, version as well. Now, one more thing that I'm going to do in here while we're here, I really do like the in painting brush. I'm just, that's the paint mixer brush. Let's see here. There it is. There's my uh, in painting brush. And I'm grabbing that in painting brush for that power tower right over there. So replacing things in Affinity Photo is really, really simple and easy. So I just extended the mountain out just a little bit over there. Now, a word of warning here. Um, when you save in Affinity Photo, uh, it's going to save as an Affinity Photo file format, OK? Like a PSD for Photoshop documents, Affinity has their own one as well. Usually, these files can get really big really quick. So always pay attention when you're saving these out. But if you're just satisfied with this one, you're not going to be doing any more edits with it. Then we can go into export, which we're going to do. And I'm going to export a JPEG for this one. Let's go ahead and hit export. And let's toss this out on my desktop. And we're going to call this AF so that we can take a look between the two different ones. So I'm going to hit save on this. And there we go. So we have just gone through three edits of the same image, an image that didn't look so repairable, and we definitely repaired it and um, definitely improved a lot. So when you think you might have something salvageable, you probably do. So I just hit don't save there. Um, so let's see the differences here. So I'm just sliding these out. So we have our Photoshop DJ, uh, our Photoshop JPEG. Let's open that. So I just did a double click to open it in preview. There we go. And let's minimize that one. And so, of course, that cloud really made a big difference. And um, yeah, we the colors are a little different. We were kind of speeding through this. Uh, but, you know, you can easily correct things 
and uh, improve and enhance as well. So don't be afraid to edit and experiment. Really don't be afraid. So what I'm seeing here, the color cast is a little different. It's not as punched up. So I could have punched up the vibrance a little bit more. But if I had saved it as an Affinity Photo file, I could have gone back and done a couple more layers and cleaned things up just a little bit more. I'm just going to shrink this one down just a touch more here for you. And then we'll put these next to each other. There we go. So, you know, oftentimes people will say, well, which photo is right? And, you know, that's going to be your tastes and preferences. It's not being about right. It's about portraying the location you saw, portraying what you saw there for that day, the surroundings, the color. Um, and then you can do a little, you know, do a little more fine tuning with it there. So I would say that I should have warmed this a little bit. So in the case of the Lightroom and Photoshop, we had selected Adobe's landscape color profile. In the case of Affinity Photo, we did not. So uh, we didn't have that available to us. So I probably should have went to the color temperature sliders and warmed it just a bit because this is looking a little cool to me compared to the Photoshop one. And finally, before I let you go on this, let's just go take a look at that Photoshop or Lightroom one one more time. So there we go with Lightroom, and I am going to go ahead and export this, and we're going to put that into MLS full size folder. So let's export so that we can see the JPEG one more time, the JPEG that was generated by Lightroom. It should be very similar to the um, Photoshop one, except for the fact that we didn't have clouds to throw in there. So let's shrink this down. Let me close this folder just to get it out of our way. All right, very close on uh, on that. So let's take a look at this. And so the biggest standout has to be the lack of clouds in here. Also, keep in mind the foreground actually got adjusted a little bit. The color temperature got adjusted ever so slightly to help us blend with that sky replacement. But when I'm looking at the two of these, if I didn't go after the sky replacement, I'm looking at the two chairs sitting out here very very similar in color um when we start zooming in here one two three and let's go over here one two three i'm gonna say that we're pretty pretty close to being spot on with this one so there you have it um three different editors three ways to come at it of course i am very very painfully aware um oh actually i'll do this that there are other editors out there. I've also been an on one user and a Topaz Labs user for years. So, you know, you can use whatever you like for doing your edits, but I just wanted to share with you, you know, three quick edits um, and how well and improved the images are just with utilizing that, uh, that basic editor panel for, uh, for editing raw. Once again, uh, when you go into Lightroom, and if you open up a JPEG and go into the develop module, it's the same develop module. Now, when we drag a JPEG into Photoshop, that develop module does not turn on there. So that's an interesting thing to note um, in Photoshop. So only when we drag the DNGs in do we immediately get that basic raw editor for ourselves. All right, everyone, I hope this helped you out and gave you a couple of ideas for when you're doing your drone work for your clients, that if you have a house space um, that is heavily shadowed, that you can still recover some of that, but also that you should be regularly experimenting no matter what photo editor you're using. Spend a little time. Every time you get new images, go ahead, jump in there, do some post-processing, do a little practice and refine your skills with bringing bad photos back to life and enhancing good photos to where they're even great photos. All right, everyone, we'll see you again on channel real soon. And uh, keep watching. Be sure to like and subscribe down below so that you get notifications of when we're doing new YouTube videos and notifications on those videos when we're talking about our new classes from uh, classes at azdrone.net. And it's down on the uh, lower left corner there. We'll see you again real soon, everyone.